Well, welcome to uh, part two of uh, fixing the yard art uh, uh, trailer. Uh, in the uh, original part one, we tried to fix it, didn't work. And we gave it away and got lucky and found an expert who races uh, lawn tractors. And then we got uh, more than we bargained for because uh, the guy was willing to get on camera and show us his mowers and, uh, I mean, his uh, track, uh, his pulling tractors and all that stuff and the interview itself and the tour of the shop was far too long to fit in this uh, part one so part two is um, will be the full interview with Lee the expert on pulling tractors so let's knock off the chit chat and go to the interview Now he says we can come in this back driveway here and circle around to his shop and I don't want to film his house or anything but he said I could film he said I could film his uh, racing tractors so We're in a, this is his uh, setup right here. He's got all those buildings right there with his racing tractors. And we're gonna put, we're gonna put the, our little uh, tractor right here. So we're here, here's the, here's the tractor we're gonna deliver and we're gonna put it right, uh, right in here. Let's see if uh, my buddy will let us take a look at his racing tractors. Yeah, we really lucked out. Found a good home for that old mower. Uh, the guy we're giving it to, he's a tractor puller. He's a big name tractor puller in this part of the country. You see all the awards and stuff he's won. What he has is these, uh, they're called uh, National Quarter Scale Tractors. Um, and they're all hopped up. This one here uh, runs at about 90 to 100 horsepower. Got uh, those big wide pulling tires. They got a a clutch and transmission just like a regular car now he's got those uh, tractors we just looked at one was a, a, a medium and one was a large uh, and these are the uh, smaller smaller tra uh, tractors here they run only 60 to 70 uh, PSI or horsepower and this guy's really a professional you can see it in his shop uh, everything is all organized he's got motors all the way along the back there toolboxes everything's orderly he can find everything it keeps everything uh, covered up this is uh, Lee. This is the genius that's doing all this. He's uh, he's he keeps the uh, that's his 90 horsepower over here over that he's back there working on, and this is a 70 horsepower here. And he was showing me some of the mechanics on these things. Uh, they are amazing. You gonna take one of these out? Yeah, I'm gonna pull them out. All right. Them out, crank them up. You need help? No. I'm just making sure the oil, I'm doing services on them. My son, Brandon, he likes the old jalopy, beat up piece of junk looking tractors. Yeah. They're totally different. I like mine all painted and pretty and. 
Well, you know, I think your son is like with the tr with the trend. You know, everybody's liking patina. He likes the rat rod look. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, Let's like. I uh, do all the mechanicing, and he does most of the driving. Do you ever uh, watch a show called uh, Vice Grip Garage? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, I know exactly. Derek, uh, he likes those patina. Another one uh, does tractors a lot is is uh, called Marty T. Uh, you might look look that up. He's uh, from New Zealand. Mm -hmm. He works on uh, he works on tractors on YouTube. Marty T. Well, these the the children's class I think are uh, they're a thousand fifty pounds. And with the adult class, we have to weigh with the driver 1,150 pounds, and that's why we have the, the weights in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, we have weights on the mid mid bars, and we have weights in the front. And um, do those weights have? Does the weight of the tractor 1,150 pounds? Does it have to be equally spaced on the tractor? Yes. Okay. Uh, you can have 1,150 pounds in the back or you know all the weight in the back and it won't go nowhere you'll bust the rear end okay you want your tractor level uh, i have a buddy who has scales that we can drive the tractor up on it's just like a race car you have to have the right air pressure for the right track some tracks is sandy some tracks is clay some tracks bite more than others i have five years of my wife Every track we go to, she'll write down what air pressure I use, what the conditions are, whether it's sunny, whether it's cloudy, because air pressure is everything. Mm -hmm. And weight. you got to have your weight distributed. Uh, if you have a sled and your hitch right here has to be no more than 13 inches off the ground, from the ground up. And uh, we run kill switches. If it breaks loose, it kills it, kills the motor. But you got to look at it like this. When you're pulling that sled, you're picking that sled up. Mm -hmm. And as that box is coming up, it's putting more weight, more weight, more weight on the front of that sled. You want your tractor balanced mm -hmm. to where it'll, this is your tractor. If it stands straight up, your sled is running into the dirt. If you got a tractor that's skimming, the top of the dirt then your sled stays up on top of the dirt front and sled so everything has to be balanced and this is a i'm not going to give away my motor sizes and stuff like that no it's no a high twin because we don't tell each other our, our secrets and stuff but every mechanic has their own secrets of how to get more horsepower out of an engine mm -hmm. and um Okay, I'm going to back up so I can see. I let my son run this one. This one puts on a show. It's all over the track and he won the championship with it this year. that uh, engine has got the 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 silver looking thing towards the back uh, that is the uh, that's the clutch I'm I moved away uh, so that I could uh, talk to you while I was running but Lee turned it off uh, this is the uh, right in here is just like a, a, a standard a standard clutch single plate clutch it's got a regular manifold, regular carburetor. Uh, the thing is uh, run down here with a with an electric an electric fuel pump right down there at the bottom. It's an electric fuel pump. And we have the 
uh, the regulator, fuel regulator, so we can adjust the amount of fuel that goes into the carburetor. Yeah, these things aren't your normal lawnmower. Um, that's a. They run off of 112. We run 112 Sunoco racing fuel. And another thing, uh, these things have that are different than a regular lawnmower is they have a fuel pump. I mean, an oil, an oil pump. And it's an aftermarket. This one's been, all my tractors have been stretched too. We'll oh, okay. The axles off for weight. Where the front axle usually is set up right in here. Mm -hmm. We'll take the front axle loose and set it all the way to the front. Until you meet, uh, until you meet the, it's a the max, the max distance. Huh? It can't be no more than 56 inch wheelbase from the center of the hubcap. To the center of the hubcap on the back wheels, no more okay. than six inches, and we'll do that because of weight. You want yeah. more weight on the front. We have weight bars that go on the front that extend, extendable weight bars. The rear end is a regular stock, it's a regular Cub Cadet housing, but we'll go in and and um. Carve it all out to where we can shove. Uh, some people run dark rear ends. Some people run pinto rear ends. Now, are those uh, are those rear ends. are those locked out so they're uh, positive traction? No, you don't want. We you don't want. No, you can't run, or we don't want positive traction. Uh, we want it where if you're going down the track and the tractor starts pulling to the right, you shift your weight over to the right, and then this axle will start kicking in and pulling you to the left okay and if it you, you want to stay as center on the tractor as possible where both tires are turned okay so if you're uh if you had positive traction you wouldn't have any control over the no control uh, no control but this one's an old old ugly one uh, the motor's not been it has all billet rods all billet internals um, you can have the heads reworked uh, this is a, what they call us, an old two-barrel carburetor, and um, yeah, all everybody has their little secrets of what they do and mm -hmm. how they build them. And this is an adjustable Midwest Super Cub flywheel to where we can change the timing and the horsepower. Okay, well, why don't you uh, why don't you explain to folks how you? You already explained it to me, but uh, explain to folks how they change you change the timing because it's fascinating. On this tractor, we have the regular red top coils that you can buy in any dealership. But if you look, I don't know if you can see it on this one. My other ones is better shaped than this one. It has. A mark, a line up right here, mm -hmm. and a mark on my flywheel here that's zero, and you can re retard it back. And you take this bolt loose, this bolt loose, this bolt, this bolt, and you can turn this flywheel to run it like 32 degrees in advance, 38 degrees in advance, 36, whatever your engine runs the best at, and how you can get the most horsepower. Then we'll lock her down. We'll tighten these bolts up, and um, that's how we do the timing on these engines. That's cool. This one's a a 25 horse. And, what you, and that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, my son won the championship with it this year. He won it by a couple of points, and we're with East Coast Pullers. And we go all over North Carolina, sometimes Georgia, South Carolina. Uh, they have big pools in Kentucky and Virginia and places like that. And we have a good time. Uh, we really, really, it's family fun. There's no alcohol, nothing like that. And um, we, we enjoy it. Now this big one I got here, this is mine. I've been working on it all summer. I have had a headache 
trying to get the fuel system on it and stuff. And this one's got the big Holly fuel pump on it, like you buy with cars. I'll back it out, Mr. Hank. You'll see it. This one. Yeah. This one here is pretty. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna. This one's fine. We're gonna back we're gonna back out because this baby is loud. help a cut fuel pump on oh and this one this one's a mid twin this one's a mid twin it's it's got all the goodies in it it's all billet it is mid. and you see this fan here this looks like it's a radiator fan but actually it's it came out of a vehicle it came it came out of a car but it's it's basically just a, a fan that blows air back on the engine they have to be cooled yeah they have to be cool now it helps that the you know the block is aluminum everything is aluminum so that cools pretty good and it's got the same timing arrangement as the other one same thing same clutch and same clutch this one has where that one is a stock Kohler carburetor they made different type carburetors mm -hmm. This one is an aftermarket, and this carburetor here was way on up there in the hundreds. It was over $500 just for this carburetor right here. It looks like you got a spacer in here, too. I have a, uh, this is an adapter. That okay. You, uh, you have to put on this intake. This is a two-barrel intake, and I had to buy the adapter to go on it to put a one-barrel carburetor on it. It's the same as that one over there, but this is a one barrel. Okay. But it's big, very big. Looks like you got some additional. Yeah, this is something I added to, for the throttle and the yeah. real. You have to have real thick springs mm -hmm. for the throttle return. You don't want it to blow up, but we have uh, we have to run fire extinguishers. We have to run kill switches and. Um, if you're a child, if the child group, the, the children that, that pull with us, mm -hmm. uh, they have to have somebody there beside them pulling, like their their daddy or whoever can work the clutch for them in case something happens that they can shut the engine off for the children. Mm -hmm. But this one's got the adjustable weight bar on the front. This one's been, I've had the front axle moved up on it too. but. This would have the sliding. I usually run mine about right there. You can see where I got my mark. Yeah. I run mine right there. And that helps keep the front of the tractor balanced. I like my tractors clean and pretty and painted. And Brandon likes the old. I've offered to make him, you know, help paint it for him, but he don't want it. And these back tires. Um, these are the pulling tires and rims they're 26 by 12 by 12 now some people run the bar tires like a regular tractor bar tires mm -hmm. children have to run bar tires they can't pull with with the pro pulling tires these tires here and rims is over a thousand dollars if you buy them new mm -hmm. I was gonna I was gonna ask about because I suspect I suspect they're pretty proud of those when you go to buy them they are a lot of us pullers will swap and trade tires and they make a a grinding disc that goes on a a grinder that you can cut them and sharpen them mm -hmm. and make them where they'll dig in to the dirt more back here in the back 
Yeah, I call those uh, sissy wheels. What? You have your weight. I have a, I run 10 pounds of weight in the back, but I also have about 60 pounds in the back underneath that rear axle. You keep the, one. keep the center of gravity low, huh? Yep, you want it low. And of course, you got your battery and stuff back here. And what, uh, what do you call those? I call them sissy wheels. What do you call them? Wheelie bars. Wheelie bars. That's right. That's that's right. We have some people that put on a show that they'll ride that wheelie bar mm -hmm. from the start line all the way to the finish. The front of the tractor straight up in the air and they're jumping from fender to fender. They're hopping from fender to fender to keep the tractor straight. And if you ever watch that Lucas Oil Pro Pulling series they have on YouTube and sometimes on television, these are just like them except for they're the national quarter scale. They're just a smaller version. And this is the big fuel pump system I have on mine that, uh, that's over $500, but that's the same Holly fuel setup that you have in your race cars. And I run pressure gauges on mine. And that's 3 eighths fuel line, a very big fuel line. These tractors drink lots of fuel. Is there a, is there a, a, a recirc line? No. I don't see Some one. of them do. Some of them do. Some of them run, you know, if it's uh, let me add. where it, if it's instead of blowing out the front, they'll have it to where it, the excess goes back into the tank. You know, uh, some some uh, regular size tractors have um, have wheel brakes, left and right wheel brakes, where you can lock one wheel out or the other. You ever have a tractor like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that tractor over there probably got it. Yeah, that my older tractor, that 135, has it. Uh, we have motorcycle class, which is called modified class, where they have rail tractors like this, some of them longer, that has the motorcycle engines on them. Mm -hmm. And they, they run the, the little independent little brake where they can work it. Okay. Each independent brake on each side. With these, you don't. We don't go through all that. And Mine mostly uses clutch. Some people do have brakes from where you mash the clutch and then you mash it on down and you have the brake. There's a little brake disc built in inside the transmission that'll stop it. Or mm -hmm. uh, some rear ends have the little disc, just like a car that has the calibers that that push and stop. Me, that's something that'll tear up or lock up and I don't run no brakes on mine. Some of them's got brakes, some of them don't. Well, I, I, I have a, you know, my lawnmowers have brakes. I've never used the brake, not even once. Have you? <laughs> no, and these are the older, my, the older style Cub Cadets. I have one that's a single horse I'm going to show you here in a minute. It's a 1976 Cub Cadet Econo line, quiet line series. And these here are in the 80s. Uh, I think it was 1982, something other like that. Uh, International sold out to Cub Cadet. And instead of being the International Harvester, that frame there is a Cub Cadet Corporation. And um, these did have lawnmower decks under them. Uh, a lot of people up north, this is where most of your tractors come from, is up north because they had the snow blade attachment to the front. They had the snow plow attachment to the front where they could blow their driveways. Uh, some of them come this one came with a creeper gear and had the hydraulic three-point hitch in the back where you could put a little disc, yeah. a little bottom plow for up north where they would uh, make a little garden in their backyard. And they just weren't that big demand down south, which there's some people's had them. But uh, if you really want to tick off some of the older men, we got some of the older men that, oh, Lord, they have huge motors and I've only been doing this for like five years if you really want to make them mad call it a lawnmower 
<laughs> because it's not a lawnmower. No, you can see that. It's a it's a quarter scale pulling tractor. It is a national NQS quarter scale pulling tractor. We run dry shafts. There's a we don't run belts because your high power tractors uh, a belt wouldn't last. You'd burn it up as soon as you come off the, the line. Mm -hmm. and, um, so these have no belts. Amazing. No belts. Notice it's a dry shaft just like a car. This one does not have reverse. This is a four speed dark rear end. It came out of a, it's a, a Cub Cadet housing, but it's got an old dart back in the 70s. Dodge dart rear end in it but this one has four speeds this one here is a it's a 23 24 25 26 gears in it that's the the little teeth on the do, inside do you do when you when you when you do some pulling do you shift gears much you don't shift no gears you we just... have uh we have lockers and what we do uh some people have their tractor set up where it pulls in first gear. Uh, it's all according to what kind of teeth ratio you want. and What kind of track you got. What, well, yes sir. It's on sandy track. Some of them can pull third gear. Some of them can pull, me, I pull second. And what we do, I can get it in gear, out of gear here. We'll take this pin come here let's say I want to pull it in, in um, second gear I'll take it and go under it well you you know what I'm talking about here I'll go in it go through that hole and that keeps the gear shifter from slamming out mm -hmm. and busting your rear end or uh, you shifter a jump out of gear and you'll over rev your engine calling damage, causing damage, or uh, you'll chip the teeth off the back of these gears, and they are very expensive. Mm -hmm. These rear ends, I got a book that I'll show you here in a few minutes of where we order. There's websites we order our parts from, and with the price of gas and cooking oil and everything else going up, tractor pulling parts is going up too. But we enjoy it. It gets us out the house on a Saturday, sometimes a whole weekend. It's according to where we go that we'll get a, a motel room and we'll stay overnight. Uh, my trailer, I started out with a little old lawnmower trailer with one tractor, a mm -hmm. little old open trailer. And uh, we've worked ourselves up to a big trailer. My son has a big trailer. And sometimes we'll take all five of them and we'll go. And, I have a huge toolbox, air compressor, helmets, everything in that trailer, lights, all the tools, spare parts we need, like we leave town, extra weight, and um, it gets us out the house on a Saturday. Sometimes uh, a thunderstorm will come and we'll get rained out, but we usually pull uh, every two weeks. And you don't have to be in the points. And the points is very hard. You have to keep your tractor going all through the year. If you make a bad pull, then the other fella that's in the points behind you, he catches up with you. Or if you blow an engine or something's tore up, I always keep a spare engine or something that I can pull parts off of to keep it going in the points. Or you can just go out there and have fun. But it's just like any other sport. You can buy a cheap tractor, cheap motor, get out there and have fun, but you're going to finish last. Or you can get off your money, buy top of the line stuff, like it, like these older men and these nationals, and you'll finish at the front. It's all how much money you want to spend. Well, and how much skill you have of working on tractors. <laughs> Uh, believe it or not, I have a notebook in my house, in the house, that I have every tractor wrote down, and I got so many of them that I have to write down what type oil goes in this one, what type 
what type spark plug goes in this one. You have cooler run, you have hotter running spark plugs, you have cooler running spark plugs. Uh, every rear end is different. This rear end is different from that rear end. I have to write down what the gear ratio is on every tractor. Uh, sometimes I forget what parts I have and I have to keep notes on everything and in order to win and perform you have to do that and um, how much more fun can a 53 year old man have on a Saturday than get out here and pull lawnmowers you know <laughs> it's not a lawnmower it was at one time it was a lawnmower but it was a, what they call a garden tractor yeah these are garden tractors yeah they came with hitches yeah little plows well and you can look at the 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 makeup i mean they got a frame and look at look at that uh cast iron axle up there that looks like a you know it looks like a now this one i have i think it's like 10 30 maybe uh 35 pounds in the front but if you look right here i got another 25 shoved in right here and that uh, keeps the front end down i have 25 more pounds of weight in the front of this one that i got bolted into the frame right there i'll show us out of the tractor keeps your battery charged up yeah, you know those uh, garden tractors, those garden or those small batteries. They they'll uh, they'll go flat on you if you don't. They sure will. Uh, the battery that's in this tractor here, I know, is seven years old, and it is one of the old style Optima track uh, batteries. Let me back this one out the way. <laughs> I can't talk about the engine on this one because it is built. I've got this one hammed up. That this tractor. Is the, this is the bad boy right here. This is the bad to the that, that's a bad boy right there. That one's uh, that one's so special. Lee doesn't even want to talk about the engine. Uh, uh, this one has, if you'll notice, this one has a different weight set up. These are suitcase weights. Mm -hmm. And um, I have this. There's 10, 20, 30, 5, 40, 45, 50, 55 pounds on this one. And um, it don't extend. So we have to add a little bit more weight to the front of them. I do it for looking good purposes. I didn't want really two identical tractors. What's that little uh, tank right there? That is the fuel tank. Oh, okay. Where this right here is a this is a windshield wiper jug. Oh, okay. Out of your truck, my truck, car, whatever. This is a windshield wiper jug that works the same as a fuel tank, and that's a homemade fuel tank. But this, this one, uh, instead of it having an air cooler fan, this is a bilge pump out of a boat, and it works the same. We try to put it in an area that where it can suck air. I have it heat wrapped. These these here are wraps to keep the heat from building up so much in the in the in the motor compartment. Some people run the panels, some people don't. I mean, I like mine running panels. But this one's running a two-barrel carburetor, but with the, the two-barrel intake, just like that one there has a two-barrel intake. But I'm running an adapter for a single-barrel carburetor on that one, where this is just an old beat-up, worked-up two-barrel carburetor. Now, is this, uh, this one's more powerful than the other one? This is a low twin, low twin class. 
I have the rules and regulations on each class. Oh, I see. Uh, we have some stock altered singles that are single cylinder Kohler engines. They're mostly 16 horse and 18 horse that you can drop a 350 piston mm. right in. And they run off two spark plugs on top of the heads. You name it, they have come up with it. <laughs> well, sh show us that single cylinder job. Yeah, this is, it wins all the time. This is, it's a good pulling tracker. Now this is the small class, right? This is the small class. That's a 12 horse, but you can tell it's my son's tractor because it's just as ugly. <laughs> and he don't want it painted, you know, just like his big one. He wants it to, he wants it to where when he pulls up, people are going to say, man, that thing ain't going to pull. That tractor's <laughs> ugly. Okay, well, he won the championship with that one this year, and he won 12 horse in uh, Manning, South Carolina with it this year. But these, these wood clamps that you get at Harbor Freight, they keep your weights from sliding from side to side and making that cling, 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 cling noise. This is my doll baby right here. I've had this tractor so many I built this tractor. I bought the frame from a friend and I built this tractor. It's a 12 horse with the 66 series international fenders. You notice these here's got Cub Cadet fenders, all of them. These have the old style uh, 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80 model international tractor fenders. Let me unhook my battery tenders. I love my battery tenders. This one has the points, condensers, and coil of an older model 60s and 70s car. It's kind of like a putt-putt John Deere motor. I was told that these single cylinder engines are, is like a single cylinder off of a Model T, uh, Model A, whatever they call them, Ford engines back in the days. Yeah, flatheads. Flatheads, that's it, flatheads. And all these engines, you can bore them out to 10,000s, 20,000s, 30,000s. And they sell the piston and rings for them. This one has been balanced too. Yeah, it must be uh, hard to do with one cylinder. What, uh, why do you have two condensers? We run two condensers because if one condenser goes bad, the other one will kick in. Okay. And it's, it's, it's like running, uh, it's more of an insurance thing. If, if one condenser goes out, we'll have another one, and you hate to lose a pull or lose something or lose a yeah a pull because of one little old 
three dollar part going out so we run two in case one goes bad the other one kicks in and keeps the motor running and, and, and where are your points at on this the points are right here let me come around there mr hank let me get a seven sixteenths and i'll show you no no it's all, no it's all right okay it, it, the, well, i like running covers on mine they look pretty and um, if you look right down in here, uh, I do run a bracket to hold this exhaust pipe on because I had one to break off yeah. at a pool one time. And if anything falls off your tractor, weight or anything, you're automatically disqualified. So you run brackets because this motor here has so much vibration. Mm -hmm. And um, if it falls off, you're done. You lose. But there's my oil stick down in there. Right here. It's a little box that this red wire is running to. Mm -hmm. That's your points. And it's the same point set up like on a Chevrolet vehicle. But they don't put out as much fire, as much heat. Yeah, these are the uh, these are the points they use in this. These are actually automotive uh, points. Some auto parts place cares them, some of them don't. I get mine off of Amazon because they're getting so hard to find now. Yeah. On this uh, starter down there, oh, does this thing have an alternator or how does the battery charge? Some of them do have, they run the alternators on them. The alternator starter, I took mine off. Okay. How does your, so your battery doesn't recharge? No. My okay. battery doesn't recharge. I have to keep a charger on it. Uh, it's dirty and nasty, but front rod of the motor, yeah and it had a belt yeah well that's a, a power drain right there and that kills power yeah you want as much horsepower freed up from these tractors mm -hmm. i do have rear ends and motors in here that that has the alternators on them but for pulling, so so all your pulling tractors then don't run alternators no okay but they do have kits that you can buy that has the charging system to me i don't i don't prefer it that takes away horsepower and you want just as much horsepower that you can possibly get now this right here is a crankcase vent okay so no PCV valves or no nope, it just I don't know where you'd even with the pressure that this crankcasing has it 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 vents it that's what it is is a crank vent yeah and this is a 1976 what they call quiet line this was a 1200 if you want to look it up this was a cup cadet 1200 it was straight drive and the 1250s were hydrostatic and the only thing we use out of hydrostatic is the rings and the housing the ring gears you'll bust ring gears i have them all stocked up and anywhere i can find one or or an axle we I buy them. I buy them up off of eBay. Some buddies and friends of mine will swap parts out and stuff, and you know that's how we do it. Well, I guess I better download that uh, tractor. Do what? I better download that tractor. Okay. The uh, I really appreciate uh, you taking that piece of scrap metal, except now. Now I feel about uh, I feel kind of uh, uh, I feel kind of bad after seeing all this high class equipment. <laughs> uh, well, all of this here is mostly aftermarket. You have to buy it aftermarket. The factory stuff will not work. It's just like a race car. If you have new parts working against old parts, something's going to break. Mm -hmm. And so, when you start with the motor, redoing your motor, you have to redo your clutch. When you buy the this the uh, thick and heavy duty clutch, then you got to redo your rear end because factory stuff won't hold up. All these exhausts and stuff are aftermarket exhausts. They've been dyno tuned and checked, and they make more horsepower. Mm -hmm. uh, Midwest Super Cubs, Zach Kerber machine and design, and so th these things. Uh are these things running running off a of governor or are you are you going straight got the governor disconnected oh no there's no governor on them no governor them off. 
we take them off we run them just as hard when they come off the line and they pull in you going you think they're going to blow up they're so loud mm -hmm. and turning uh this tractor here i have a a, a 6000 rpm cam from midwest super cub in it and that means uh, the book says that you have to get the RPMs up over 7,000 RPMs in order for the cam to perform like it's supposed to. So these motors sound like they're going to blow up. But we run no governors and we run the the 112 octane racing fuel. And um, when I change my oil and stuff, I use the motor oil. A lot of your parts store has them, some of them don't. But we use the high zinc. It has to be... 30 weight, 40 weight, high zinc. And the zinc helps clean and lubricates and washes your cylinders. And um, that's what you want. I also noticed you don't have air cleaners. Uh... Some people run air cleaners. To me, that's just blocking horsepower. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. It would, it would stop up horsepower. Uh, if it's a real sandy track, I kind of hate it because it's sucking in sand and is that is that a vacuum leak or is that's that a, just an old uh, vacuum line there that's no good is, is that a, is that causing a leak or no it don't hurt nothing okay don't hurt a thing it's probably been plugged off we do all kind of work to our carburetors we'll plug off holes and you can see i got dap putty on this one because i got it dialed in right where i want it and with the vibration and the pulling these little adjustments sometimes will move on you and they'll throw your engine off. You know, you'll have you'll be scratching your head like, what's going on? It's, it's skipping and popping. Well, I got DAP on mine, silicone, so that it don't move. And I know that it's dialed in. This one I have to run a, a choke on. If you'll see, I have a choke button here. Mm -hmm. I run a choke on this one. This one is very cold natured. Uh, you have to have a, a choke or sometimes you'll see drivers they'll they'll stick their hand in here like this and crank them up and um, instead of sticking my hand in this one I just put a choke on it none of my rest of them has chokes my wife whenever we get ready to pull she'll come over here and I'll lift the hood and she'll take her hand and she'll Shove it in there till I get it cranked up, you know, and then it'll fire off. Yeah. It's all really, Hank, how much you want to spend. If you want to go out there and have fun and bring you a steak and grill or whatever, you, you can pull right along with the big boys and the professionals. But if you want to finish at the top and be a winner, you're going to spend some money. Yeah. And um, I got tired of finishing last. <laughs> And that's the truth. I got tired of finishing last. And um, I told my wife that I'll take some some money out my budget. You have to budget yourself. You can't spend all your money in this and not be able to make a house payment or a light bill or whatever. You, you budget yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I'll take $50 a week or something. I'll set it aside. In case I have a breakdown, I can buy a part. And um, it's all how much you want to spend. And we really enjoy it. My family, my wife, my son, his girlfriend. Uh, he did say they were planning on painting that ugly one in there. They were going to paint it pink because his girlfriend wants to pull it. And I don't know about the pink part, but that's them. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking that John Deere. I'm, I'm really gratified that uh, it's going to have a, it's going to have such a uh, high class home. And I hope you can. Uh... Well, this I'm gonna see what I can do. See if I can get a Kohler to fit on it, cause I got two Kohler engines. I'll see if I got them in the back right there. I, I suspect a Kohler will fit. I mean, it, it, it was, it's probably built to, to fit both. I'll try it and see. I like messing. Well, those uh, pulling tractors are pretty neat. Let's go ahead and. Go ahead and deliver this thing. And that's the uh, end of the uh, 
interview and the tour of the uh, uh, tractors, I was particularly impressed that I kind of understood the different parts and stuff he was, he was showing me because all these tractors he, he runs, uh, they're not those computer operated, uh, you know, electronic uh, wizardry that uh, we have in modern engines today. These things all run uh, just uh, normal, uh, you know, or the, the old school electronics. Uh, there's no electronic wizardry involved. Uh, everything is out where you can see it, the fuel pumps and oil pumps and uh, condensers and spark plugs and cooling systems and everything is, you know, it's, it's really satisfying that you, when you can look at an engine and tell what you're looking at. Um, and it's just amazing. Uh, he, he didn't, uh, he didn't want to talk about horsepower or any of the changes, you know, that he made the engines, but I can, he told me some of it and I'm not going to repeat it because, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, tribal knowledge and, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, proprietary information that goes into that, that competitive pulling. And uh, they don't like to talk about cam lifts and uh, displacement and all that stuff because, uh, you know, it's, it's all a science. All right, so... Uh, I hope you enjoyed the interview, and make sure you're back here next week for an exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.